Hello and welcome to lesson 37 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. Today we're going to be looking at how to find the equation of the straight lines which just touch a curve at a specific point. So namely the tangents to the curve at a point. And also something called the normal to a curve, which is another straight line which is related to the tangent. Before we start with this, with this question here, I'm just going to run through what we found out last lesson. So in lesson 36, we started the process of differentiation. Differentiation is the process of finding the gradient of a curve at a specific point. And we found it by finding the gradient of chords from the point P to different points further away on the curve. And we found that the, the closer we got to P, so if we did the chord from P to R, that was a, a decent estimate for the gradient of the tangent. P to Q was a better estimate. P to this point here is even better. So if, as we got closer and closer, as we made the distance between P and the point we went to, closer and closer such that the distance between them tended towards zero, we got the gradient of the tangent. And that was called differentiation from first principles. And it's a process which proved a certain result that we needed. You don't need to keep doing differentiation from first principles every time you want to differentiate. You simply need to use the process, the result that we found. And the result that we found was the following. That if we have a function of y, so y is equal to some function of x, okay, so y equals a times x to the power of n, then the gradient so dy by dx, which is the rate at which y is changing as we change x. So dy over dx, the change in y, the instantaneous change in y over the change in x, was equal to n times a times x to the power of n plus, sorry, that's a mistake, n minus 1 there. And so what you needed to do when you differentiated was simply bring the old power down, multiply by the coefficient in front of the x, and then drop the power by one. So that is the process of differentiation. So for example, if we had this, this function here, y is equal to 7x cubed minus 5x to the power of 12 plus 8, then dy by dx would equal, for 7x cubed, differentiating that, the 3 comes in front and multiplies by the 7 to make 21, then the power of x, which was 3, drops by 1 to 2. The next one, minus 5x to the power of 12. The 12 multiplies by the minus 5 to make minus 60. And then the 12 drops by 1 to 11. So the power of x is now 11. And 8. Well, 8 can be written as 8x to the power of 0. That's the same as 8. So if we multiply the power of zero by eight, we get zero. So whenever we get just a constant, when we differentiate it, it becomes nothing. So the gradient function for this curve would be 21x squared minus 60x to the power of 11. So that would help us find the gradient for any specific point on the curve. So let's put that into practice. What we're going to do is we're going to find the equation of the tangent which touches this curve, y equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7 at the point 2 minus 5. In order to do this, we need to, to find the equation of a straight line. We need the gradient of a straight line and a point on that straight line. We have the point. We're given a point on that straight line. So we need all we need now is the gradient of that tangent. To do so, we need to use differentiation. So we have that y is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7. So my first thing to do is to find the gradient function for this curve. And that is dy by dx is equal to, so x cubed becomes 3 multiplied by x to the power of 2. Minus 5x squared becomes minus 10 x to the power of 1, because the 2 multiplied by minus 5 makes minus 10, and the true 2 drops by 1 to 1. And the 7 is a constant, and when we differentiate, as I mentioned already, the 7 becomes 0. So dy by dx is equal to 3x squared minus 10x. So that is the gradient function for any point on this curve. 
But I want the gradient for this specific point here, 2 minus 5. So all I need to do is find the gradient when x is equal to 2, because the gradient depends on x. It is 3 times the x-coordinate squared minus 10 times the x-coordinate. So all I need to do is substitute this x-coordinate, 2, and I will find the gradient. So when x is 2, the gradient dy by dx is equal to 3 lots of 2 squared minus 10 lots of 2. And that is 3 times 4, so 12, take away 20, so negative 8. So the gradient of my tangent at this point is minus 8. So at this point, I now have the gradient and I have a coordinate. So I could simply use y equals mx plus c to find the equation of the straight line. There are different ways people do this. I, I imagine at this, at this level, you have learned the way where you write y equals mx plus c and just fill in what you know. I know the equation of the tangent, so the tangent's equation will be of the form y is equal to m, m I know because the gradient is minus 8, so minus 8x plus c. I don't know the y-intercept yet, but I can use some information to find it. I know that the, the line goes through the coordinate 2 minus 5, so I can replace y with minus 5. And I can replace x with 2. And I can then work out what c has to be. So minus 5 is equal to minus 8 lots of 2, or minus 16 plus c. So add 16 to both sides, and I get 11 is equal to c. So therefore, the equation of the tangent is y is equal to minus 8x plus 11. And that's what we were asked to find, and we've got it. We have the equation of the straight line which touched that curve at the point 2 minus 5. So the steps you need to go through. First, step one, differentiate, find the gradient function. Step two, substitute in the value of x into that gradient function until you've got the gradient of the curve at that point. Step three, Use y equals mx plus c with your information in order to find the equation of the line. Okay, so have a go at this one now. Find the equation of the tangent to the curve y equals 3x squared minus 7x minus 2 at the point 2 minus 4. So pause at this point, have a go at this question, and then I'll give you the answer. So first step dy by dx is equal to 6x minus 7. Next step, substitute in the value of x. The value of x is 2, so when x is 2, the gradient is equal to 6 twos minus 7, which is 5. So the equation of the tangent is y equals 5x plus c. To find c, we use the information of the point that it goes through. So replace y with minus 4, replace x with 2, and therefore c is going to equal minus 14. So your equation of your line is y is equal to 5x minus 14. If you got that right, really well done. Okay. So that's how to find the equation of the tangent to a curve at a specific point. Now what we're going to look at is how to find the equation of something called the normal to the curve at a point. So what is a normal? So we know if we have a curve, this, this blue line here, y equals some function of x. And we wanted to draw a tangent at the point p, we could do so. And the tangent would look something like that. It goes in the direction of the curve at that point P. The normal to the curve goes through P as well, but it is perpendicular to the tangent. So it goes through the tangent at right angles. So it looks something like that. So the normal has a gradient 
which is perpendicular to the gradient of the tangent. Hopefully at GCC level, you have learnt about how to find perpendicular gradients. If the tangent gradient is m, do you remember what the normal gradient would be? If, if the term the negative reciprocal is coming to mind, then, then that's good. If it doesn't come to mind, that's okay. When you have a gradient, the perpendicular gradient will be minus one over that gradient. Uh, one of the reasons why that, that is, is because for the tangent, if it has a gradient of n, it means that if you go one across, you've gone m up. And if you rotate that 90 degrees round, it looks something like this. So that one is now there, that m is now there. And since, since if you're going from that this point to this point, you've gone m to the right, so positive m, and you've gone one down, so negative one, the gradient of the green line is the change in y, the change in y is minus one, over the change in x, which is m. And that there is y. If you have m as one gradient, then minus one over m, so the negative reciprocal will be the perpendicular gradient. So we're going to use that now to find the equation of the normal for different questions. So let's have a go at this one. Here's our second worked example. Find the equation of the normal to the curve y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 13x plus 10 at the point minus 340. Okay, step one, same as before. Find the gradient function. The gradient function tells you the gradient of the curve. So dy by dx for this is 3x squared plus 4x to the power of 1 minus 13 and then the 10 differentiates to nothing. So that's the gradient function. So I can now find the gradient of the curve at that point, minus 340. So when x is minus 3, the gradient of the curve dy by dx is equal to 3 lots of minus 3 squared plus 4 lots of minus 3 minus 13. If you are tempted to use your calculator to do this, then I understand that temptation. I would avoid it. But if you do use a calculator, make sure you put your negative three in brackets before you square it. If you try and do something silly like writing minus three squared, it'll give you minus nine. And we all know that a negative number, if we square it, will be positive because a negative times a negative will be positive. But your calculator is not doing that. It is doing take away what three squared is. It is using the order of operations properly and it is squaring the three before it is then taking it away. So don't do that. Make sure if you have a negative, you put it in brackets if you are putting it to a power. But avoid that by just using your brain instead. Three lots of minus three squared. Minus three squared is nine. Times by three, you get 27. Four lots of minus three is minus 12. And then take away 13 as well. And so what you get is you get two. So the gradient of the curve at the point minus 340 is two. But that's the gradient of the tangent. Okay, so that there is the gradient of the tangent. If we want the gradient of the normal, we know that is the negative reciprocal of our gradient of the tangent. The tangent has the same direction as the curve at the point. Normal has the perpendicular direction. So we do the negative reciprocal of two, which is minus one over two, or minus a half. So now we have our gradient, minus a half. We have a coordinate, minus 340. So we can simply use y equals mx plus c to find the coordinate. Sorry, to find the coordinate of the y-intercept, but also to find the equation of the normal. So let's write that down. We have y is equal to minus a half x plus c. We know that. That's our equation of the normal. And then we substitute in minus 340 into that. So we replace y with 40. We replace x with minus 3. 
Minus half times minus three is positive three halves. If we subtract that from both sides, we get 38 and a half is equal to C. So then Y is equal to minus a half X plus 38 and a half. Now, to be honest, I really don't like 38 and a half. It's ugly. All mixed numbers are really ugly. They are, to be honest, an abomination. They shouldn't be allowed. In some countries, they aren't allowed. They don't write 38 and a half because algebraically, if you put two things next to each other, they're multiplying. But 38 and a half actually means 38 plus a half. So I would prefer the following ways of writing this. Either write it as top heavy. So y equals minus a half x plus 77 over 2. Much nicer. Or even better than that, get rid of all the fractions entirely by multiplying everything by 2. So 2y two equals negative x plus 77. And it's much nicer if we have it in this form, if we have it as ax plus by plus c equals 0. So add x to both sides. x plus 2y minus 77 equals 0. That's a really nice way of writing it. So my pr preferred options are either the second one or the third one. Okay, all those, th all those equations are the equation of the normal, but they are just written in different ways. However, these two are my preferred options. Okay, so the only step that was different in this example to the one we did with the tangent was the fact that once we found the gradient of the tangent, we then found the negative reciprocal of that, and that was the gradient of the normal. And then we used y equals mx plus c as we've done before. So have a go at this one using the same process. So find the equation of the normal to the curve y equals 7x squared plus 10x plus 8 at the point minus 1, 5. So pause at this point, go through the entire process. So step one, differentiate. Step two, find the gradient of the tangent. Step three, use that to find the gradient of the normal. And then step four, use y equals mx plus c. Okay. So the answer. Firstly, differentiate. So dy by dx is equal to 14x plus 10, the 8 disappears. When x is minus 1, the gradient of the curve is equal to 14 times minus 1 plus 10, which is minus 4. Therefore, the gradient of the normal is the negative reciprocal of that, which is positive a quarter, okay? Because it is minus one over minus four, so that's positive a quarter. That's the negative reciprocal of minus four. So the equation of the normal is y equals a quarter x plus c. We know the point is minus one five, so we substitute that in. So we replace y with five, we replace x with minus one, a quarter of minus one is minus a quarter. Add that to both sides. You get C is equal to five and a quarter, which is ugly. So the equation of the normal, if you've written it out, is probably going to be written as Y equals a quarter X plus five and a quarter. But if you are more sophisticated, you would have written it as Y is equal to a quarter X plus 21 quarters. And if, if you're even more sophisticated, you would have written 4y equals x plus 21, or 0 equals x minus 4y plus 21. You could have had minus x plus 4y minus 21 equals 0, but I prefer having a positive x first and then anything else. Okay, so this is good. Okay, if you got that, great. This is better. And this is the best way of writing. Okay. Well done if you've got any of those. Um, and if you followed the whole process and understood it, brilliant. Now it's time to practice this until the process is fluent. And a fluent process is something you can do with, with barely a thought. It, it doesn't require much effort to 
to do it. Okay, if you are fluent in a language, you can speak in that language without thinking too much. It is just part of what you can do. Okay, so that you can now think on a higher plane because you can do these things without too much thought. To do that practice, the best place to go is in this textbook. Um, it is exercise 14.2. So the second exercise in chapter 14. So go away and practice that, make it fluent. And then we are going to continue this process of um, learning about calculus in the following lessons. Okay, so off you go and enjoy.